when we were talking about the idea of proof, it was all about how to take logic and apply it to a situation. Um, how do you try and develop new knowledge based on things you already know and advance your understanding of a topic or an idea, right? Now, the whole idea that we're trying to get across in this course is there's more ways to prove things than just the way that you've experienced. And pretty much all the proofs you've done have really been in geometry. You know, you prove that a triangle is isosceles or you prove that two lines are parallel. So that's been the whole style of proofs that you've been doing. But last week we looked at proof by contradiction, which is a whole different way of doing things, very backwards. You assume something doesn't, isn't you know, true, and then you prove that it is. Mathematical induction is, is very similar. Now, it's really important. You'll probably hear me say um, by induction, and I will uh, sort of just as an uh, informal, conversational, colloquial way, but it's actually really important that you call this mathematical induction because the word induction means a lot of things that are very different to different groups of people. I'll give you an example. Uh, some of you at home, um, when, you're, when you're watching, like if you, if you or your parents or anyone else in your family is cooking, right? on your cooktop, there's lots of different kinds of cooktops. right? Uh, for example, who has gas in their home? Is there gas? Okay, good. So you've got a fire coming out of your stovetop. Um, I do not have gas, unfortunately, so therefore I've got an electric cooktop, and that electric cooktop, as well as your, um, your, what's it called? Your gas cooktops with a fire, they work by conduction, right? This is a scientific word. What does conduction mean? Does anyone know? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, something conducts here. You've got something hot and something else hot, and just by virtue of them being next to each other, um, there's a transfer of energy and therefore heat, right? So that's conduction. But you also have induction cook cooktops. And they don't work by uh, you know, just being hot and just being hot. In fact, you can turn an induction cooktop, stovetop on, you can turn it on to maximum, and then you can touch it with your hand because it doesn't actually feel hot. It works by magnetism and it actually induces an electric current that produces heat in your, in your pot, which is quite impressive, right? So that's what induction means in, in physics. Induction also has a meaning when we talk about just argument. So this is actually more relevant to us. For instance, um, suppose you go, you go traveling, right? And uh, you are in another country and you're eating food. And you go to a restaurant and you eat the food there and it makes you really, really unwell. You feel really sick. You're like, whoa, okay, that wasn't good. So the next day you go to a different restaurant on the same street and you eat the food and it makes you feel sick as well. And you're like, this is not very good. What kind of a holiday is this? So you're like, okay, third time lucky, you go to a third restaurant, same street, and you feel sick again, okay? Three different restaurants, three different days, but you, you get ill on each one of them, okay? Now, what we would do is you would say, well, are you gonna go to that same street and eat in the same place for the fourth day? Probably not. And what you're doing is you're applying, um, you're applying inductive logic. The idea simply is, and this is important to write down because it's a common link. You are generalizing from a small data set. This is a very technical way of saying it, but when I explain what this means, uh, in terms that I just gave you an analogy, you'll understand. A small data set means you haven't seen every single restaurant on this street. You haven't seen every single restaurant in this country. It's a small data set. You haven't tested everything. But it's a large enough data set that you can say, well, I think there's a pattern here. I think generally speaking, maybe eating on this street is a bad idea or Indonesian food just doesn't agree with me. So we make a sort of uh, logical leap, what are you, Justin? Based on this small data set, okay? Now, mathematical induction is like this, but it's, um, it's better because when you generalize from a small data set, you could be wrong, right? Do you agree? Like the fourth restaurant actually might have been fine. And you don't actually know until you actually have a go. Or maybe the fifth or the sixth, or conceivably even 99 restaurants could be bad and the 100th one is good. So this always has a bit of sort of wiggle room and is blurry and is not quite true, right? That's the way life is. But mathematical induction is a bit different. Mathematical induction actually has at its core the same kind of deductive logic, deductive, not inductive, that you've been using all along. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to give you an illustration how this works. Here's my illustration. 
I'm gonna need some help. Uh, I'm going to give you guys, um, actually, I want you to pick a number um, and get your calculator out because some of you might pick big numbers. I want you to pick a number between one and 100, right? Pick a number between one and 100. And with your chosen number, I want you to put it into this expression here, uh, where your chosen number will be m. So maybe you choose 5, or 18, or uh, 53. I actually don't know. Numbers get pretty big pretty fast when you're putting stuff up in powers. So I don't know if you choose a number too large, your calculator will just spit it back out at you and say, I can't handle this. Um, but I'd like you to have a go. Pick a number. And once you've got a number, uh, I'd like you to tell me what it is and we'll write it on the board. Come in the shot. Oh yeah, takes it. Okay, who's got some numbers for me? First I want to hear what's the number you thought up, and then secondly I want to hear what your calculator display tells you. Can someone give me a start? Yeah, go ahead Chloe. Five, yep. and I got 423. Thank you very much. Okay, someone give me another one. Farwad, you got one? Uh, I got 10. Yep. <laughs> I'm still writing down my number. <laughs> Yep. And, th and 33? Okay, excellent. Can I get another couple? That'd be good. Who else hasn't said anything? Yeah, yeah go ahead. Six. Six? Six. Good. And let's go for one more. Emily, do you have a number? Um, two. Yep. 207, was that right? Okay, fantastic. Now, what I want you to have a look at with all of these numbers, because um, we're pretty good at working out when numbers are divisible by three, we have a test for this, it's really simple. How do you find out if a number is divisible by three? You, yeah. Okay, you, you're doing some adding. Can you be a little more specific? What are we adding up? The, the digits, yeah? So we can quickly test this, right? What are you trying to grab a sec quickly? And I'm going to need your help with, um, <laughs> with this number in here. 423, you add up the digits you get, of course. Nine, that checks out. What about, uh, I'll come down here. This one you get, you get nine again, so that looks good. 52,113, uh, so you get 12, don't you? And I have no idea, I've been trying to stall, has someone worked this out one already? Whoa, 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 hold on. We want to add up the digits, right? Just the digits. Yeah, what, what is it? 2 plus 6 plus 5 plus... Has anyone got it? Come on, you have calculators. I have no calculator. 42. 42, which again, you can do it again, which is a nice thing in case you can't remember that 42 is divisible. You're like, oh, great, great, this works, okay. So this all looks fantastic so far. What we've done is we've experimented, right? Uh, this is what a scientist does. A scientist tries things out sees if there's a pattern, and it's like, well, this has happened many, many times. I can be reasonably confident, okay? So if all we were doing was just looking at this and saying, eh, I think it's pretty good, then we would be doing just inductive logic. But what we're going to do now is mathematical induction, which is more than just throwing stuff at a wall and seeing what sticks. Uh, it's actually being a little more rigorous, and it's got three steps that I'm going to illustrate for you. And I want you to work out how is it that this, these three steps together prove that it's not just probably true, but actually it's always true, okay? So I'm going to show you the three steps and I want you to have the gears turning your head as to why this works, okay? The three steps conveniently form a word, T-A-P, tap, okay? So T stands for test. Now, when you test, we've been testing, we've been testing, but we've been testing somewhat random values. When we test over here for mathematical induction, not just like regular induction, you have to test a specific value, namely the first one. Have a look. N can't be just any number. For example, N can't be a half. N can't be negative three. N has to be a certain kind of number. Do you remember what this um, weird set of symbols and notation means? What's that about? 
positive integers, very good. I get the positive from the plus, and Z uh, is our symbol for integers. So therefore, the first number that satisfies this rule, the first one has to be one. So that has to be the number that I test, okay? Again, I want you to have a think as I go through this, why must I test the first one? And it doesn't, it's not enough to test any random number, it has to be this one. So we can all do this together. Uh, let's have a look at this thing. If I test for n equals 1, I'm going to get 7 to the power of 1 minus 4 to the power of 3. Do you agree? So that's 7 take away 64. That's negative 57, I think, which is divisible by 3. It's a bit weird. Uh, this question, you know, divisibility, we usually only think about it in terms of positive numbers. But this checks out. 57 itself is divisible by 3, so I'm happy with that. Okay. So therefore, I now know that this statement is true for the first possible value. Okay.